welcome back to my channel. It's been a, a little bit. Um, winter really made its presence known. I'll say that. I just haven't been super motivated to do, bless you, a lot of things, but I still am so excited to keep making videos and I say it every time, but I have lots of videos filmed, more that I'm gonna be filming soon. Lots of stuff is coming this summer. I'm just in general very excited for the summer. Summer is my time in any year, um, but I think especially this summer, I'm just really keeping my eyes on the prize of sunshine. Do you know? So in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the cafe curtains that I made, I'm not kidding, almost a year ago. It was April of last year, very much when quarantine started. So I have these amazing, huge windows in my space that I'm grateful for every single day. I love these windows. And the apartment did actually come with window treatments that allow you to have privacy at the bottom, or you can put the window treatments all the way up and have totally open windows. But the issue is when the they're down for privacy, um, it exposes the strings, the inner workings of the window treatment, and that is just a toy to Juniper. And so anytime, I think one time she got to it as fast as like five minutes, Anytime I would put them down just for privacy, she would chew through those strings. And if you break one of those strings, you'd like destroy the whole mechanism. It has to be sent out to a specialist who has to fix it. It's a whole process. And so I just realized that those weren't really gonna be a thing that I could use. And I also just really love the look of cafe curtains. It's really going for the like cutesy cottage, Luke's diner, coffee in your little mitts, you know? Do you know? So that's the vibe I was going for. So I was like, this is a great project. Everything's aligning to make some cafe curtains. And the thing is, I don't currently have a sewing machine. I've kind of waffled on investing in one. I actually have another video that's coming up soon in which I will hopefully be able to borrow a sewing machine for a fun project. But at the time, especially in the start of quarantine, borrowing one just out of the question, I had to just work with what I could have delivered to my door. So that's why I went the no-sew route. Also, because of Juniper's uh, affinity for biting those strings, um, I actually had two window treatments that were out of commission at the time that I made these curtains. So there was that additional impetus of like, I had in one window, like pillows stuffed up for privacy at night. And then another window, I just like taped up like craft paper. And it wasn't the cutest look. It really felt like a project that should be done soon. So I would say that if you already have a sewing machine to probably go that route and if you know how to use it, it will save you a lot of time. But if you don't have a sewing machine for whatever reason, can't borrow one, you can totally do this no sew. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. Okay, so here are the materials that you will need. So the fabric of your choice, I ended up needing four yards. Next is I used a product called Heat and Bond. I ended up needing about three rolls. I would say to get three to four rolls, um, just get more of it than you think you're gonna need because I did actually end up having to stall in the middle of the project to order another roll because I ran out. Next is liquid stitch, an iron, whether you wanna use tension rods or a curtain rod, a tape measure, pencil, and fabric scissors. Okay, so let's get into the steps. So step one is to lay out your fabric and potentially iron it a little bit if you need to. And then I recommend marking up your fabric. So taking all your measurements and figuring out where you're gonna cut first and do that for all of the pieces before you cut, um, just to make sure you don't leave yourself short at the end or if you need to make adjustments along the way, I think do all your measurements and marking first and then cut. Be sure when you're making your measurements, of course, to account for a seam allowance. So I determined that mine needed to have a height of 24 inches. So I accounted for that in creating my hems and really tried to keep all the hems about one inch just to make sure that they would all come out to be the same height once they were hung in the window. Also be sure to take your measurements and cut your fabric um, according to the size of your window to get the effect that you want. So I very much wanted the like bunched up, like again, like cute cafe curtain look. And I did actually short myself a little bit on my biggest window. Um, and I ended up just creating an additional piece that I kind of tacked on to ensure that I could still get some nice bunching, if you will. 
so that it had like a nice little folded effect when it was in the window. So just make sure you account for that. In terms of actually making my lines, I wish that I had a yardstick. I wish that I had gotten one, but I just ended up using the tension rods themselves as my straight edge. So just make sure that you maybe mark a few points along the line that you're gonna need to draw and then cut because um, it's easy to get off track. So just use a straight edge to make sure that you don't get off track. So then I cut all of my pieces. Um, Juniper did her best to help along the way. You know, she really had her own feelings about how the project should be done and she really let that be known. But you know, we worked it out. I listened, I took her advice and then we pressed on, literally. <laughs> okay, so once all my pieces were cut, I went about making the individual curtains. So starting with hemming all three sides and then the last piece I did was the channel on the top. So again, I used the heat and bond to create each of the hems. So I folded over a little bit of the raw edge and then used my tape measure to make sure I was keeping my hems about one inch. I think they ended up being a little bit wider than an inch, but that way I was just keeping them consistent so it would look pretty uniform when they were all hung in the windows. And I did it in sections. I found that was the easiest way to use the heat and bond. So I would just cut a piece of the tape and then I would lay it down and do a little bit of the hem and keep going. I felt like that was the easiest way for me to make sure that I was keeping it the same size and uh, not burning myself. I found it only took about three seconds or so of pressing, just kind of moving it in that area. If you press for longer than that, or if your heat is up too high, the texture of the tape will come through, which both can be a giveaway that it's, you know, no sew, that it, the product is there, et cetera. Um, but also if you have trypophobia like me, um, it'll be upsetting. So, you know, three seconds or less, just really get in and get out. Um, because uh, you can't unsee it once you've seen it. Okay, so then for the last step um, to create the channel at the top, I went ahead and grabbed the tension rod that I was going to be using to make sure that I was making the channel wide enough and also just to give me a guide while I was using the liquid stitch. So what I did was first fold it over a little bit of the raw edge and press that down with the iron because that was the part that I was gonna put the liquid stitch on. I tried to do it without pressing that edge down first and it was just making it too difficult. And so I just recommend taking that extra step and ironing down the raw edge. And make sure that the channel can accommodate the widest part of your tension rod or curtain rod. So rather than start in the middle, um, make your marks or however you opt to do it to account for the ends of the tension rod or curtain rod. That might seem obvious, but I think when you're just going, that's something that can be overlooked. So just make sure that the channel you make can accommodate the widest part of the tension rod or curtain rod. And then I just also did this in sections. So folding down little parts. Um, don't worry too much if it bunches up. Mine did that a little bit. Um, when it's hanging, it's gonna, you know, you won't be able to notice that. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that your ends and the corners are pretty sharp and neat um, because that is something that you will see and that'll just give you the best result. And then I did that for all of the curtains. This is definitely a project you could do in an evening. I was averaging probably about an hour per curtain to hem all three sides and then to iron down the raw edge um, for the channel side and then to create the channel. Certainly a nice, you know, weekend project or an evening project. And then it was time to hang them up. And I love them so much. Um, I'm so happy I made them and invested in this project because I love when the sun sets that I can just super easily create that privacy in here. And they also like look cute from the outside too. It's also just really fun in the morning to like push back the curtains um, and start the day. And I did cut um, some ribbons so that I could do a little bow on each of the curtains. At some point, I will actually just add a little snap onto those bows so that it's a much easier on off thing where I don't actually have to tie a bow every time. But sometimes I'll do that if I just want it to look even more polished and cafe-y and cute. I'm also really excited by the prospect of making seasonal ones. So making like a really cute floral set for spring, obviously doing pumpkin ones for fall, and then maybe something wintry and fun um, for the winter months. Um, but I think if I do create seasonal ones, I will wait until I have my paws on a sewing machine first because by the time I finished it, it was just, I mean, it did take a, a good amount of time. And I think to create one set, no sew felt good to me. But I think if I wanted to make more, I would probably want a sewing machine just to expedite that process a little bit. 
And that's how I made my DIY no sew curtains. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you end up doing this project, be sure to take a picture and tag me at Caitlin Does It All on Instagram. I would love to see what you make. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will get back to you. If you haven't subscribed already, you can do that right now. I'm really excited. I mentioned this, I believe in October when I was posted my last video that um, I have built a little voiceover booth here in my apartment. There's some finishing touches that I need to do, but that video is coming soon. I have some exciting things that I'm doing in my kitchen and bathroom, and then also some non-DIY uh, videos as well. There's a particular thing that I'm very excited to share on this channel that is definitely gonna become its own series. There's gonna be lots of content I can make about it in the summer. More to come on that. Be sure you're following me on Instagram. Um, that's probably where you'll learn what that thing is first. I'm very, very excited. I'll just say that. It's really cool. And that's it for today. I hope you're continuing to take care of yourself and doing the things that you need to do to feel as well as you possibly can during this time. One year in, we're strong. You're strong. We can do this. Summer's on the way. Beautiful sunshine's on the way. Okay, bye-bye.